Uh, okay, so we have fifty-eight participants, and uh, we are live on YouTube also. Uh, so there are also students are joining. So I think uh, can we start, Avari sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting. Greetings to one and all present here. I, Sanket Anil Bhame, welcome you all for today's session. That is beyond building information modeling, a peak in the future of construction management. Organized by AISSMS College of Engineering, Pune, Department of Civil Engineering and First Year Engineering, and also in association with Green Ecom Solution Private Limited. I wholeheartedly welcome the speakers for today's session. In engineer Rohit Kohl, and also like to welcome engineer uh, Aniket Nampaldiwar, directors of Green Ecom Solution Private Limited. I would also like to welcome principal Dr. D S Bormane sir, H O D of Civil Engineering Department, Dr. U R Avari sir, and H O D of First Year Engineering Professor V R Patil sir, and all our enthusiastic participants for today's session. I now request the head of Civil Engineering Department, Dr. U R Avari sir. to say a few words about our civil engineering department over to you sir okay thank you good morning to all i uttam avari head department of civil engineering aissms college of engineering welcome one in all for today's webinar on the beyond bm epic the future of construction management from our alumni mr rohit kaul and aniket nampaliwar the the department of civil engineering works with the vision nurturing the talent in civil engineering to work as a global leader for the development of the society department was established in the academic year 2002 for undergraduate course with the intake of 60 and as per the demand we opted for an additional intake of 60 in the academic year 2012 and a postgraduate course in structural engineering from the academic year 2011 both the courses the ug and pg running successfully with the full admission till that the department is dedicated to advancing the body of knowledge and professional practice for the civil engineering to meet the challenge of the current decades department have highly qualified and experienced staff we have excellent infrastructure facilities with the ict based classroom seminar hall and well equipped laboratories with the latest technology and software the teaching learning process in the department not only aims the course content but also tries to mold the student into capable professionals and from the last one year our student pros to organize the different type of the webinars stdp fdp it is for the student as well as the faculty of civil engineering the all these effort are making sure to continue the legacy of providing the society with the efficient and knowledgeable engineers every years thank you over to you thank you sir now i would like to introduce the audience about our eminent speakers for the session we have with us engineer aniket nampalliwar He started the Green Ecom Solution Private Limited Company in 2015. He has done masters in architecture in sustainable architecture and bachelor of engineering in civil engineering. He has also certified in LEED, IGBC and GRIHA CP. He is also an green associate. He is great in construction consul consultation in building information modeling with design analysis. and also creating a sustainable project he has 7 years of experience he has a quite good hold in design and energy management he also has a knowledge of engine energy modeling and analysis lastly he also has sound knowledge project 
and building information setup few of their projects are tata memorial hospital mumbai the salt reliance aerospace limited nagpur national law university nagpur a raymond lead silver certified at pune and analysis of delhi international airport and deva headquarters dubai and many more now moving on to our second speaker for today engineer rohit kohl who has started his career in 2015 he has done post graduation from nikmar in construction management along with the degree of bachelor of engineering from civil background he has a sound management fundamental in project program cost and energy he also has experience in project and building information modeling he is also able to design 4d 5d and 7d building information modeling designs he his major projects are marquard india private limited tata memorial hospital in mumbai the salt reliance aerospace limited nagpur national law university jw old age home amsterdam along with analysis for deva headquarters dubai and delhi international airport and many more in pune it is an honor for us to have you with us sir without any further delay i now request in engineer aniket nampalliwar and engineer rohit kohl to kindly begin with the session over to you sir thank you so much sanket for those kind words and a very warm introduction thank you so much avari sir for you know uh, again uh, you know uh, introducing us with the fa eminent faculties of uh, the aissms the um, you know the the infrastructure that we have in aissms that i think myself and aniket are also aware of and we made duly use of those and and i think with those ideas which we had back then we were able to you know start this particular company and we could materialize our thought processes into into a form of a company i would say so i hope i have started sharing my screen and i think it is visible yes sir it is visible yeah thank you so i think uh, you know everyone uh, good morning everyone uh, you know i think aniket would also agree with me that still when we pass from that road you know rto road in front of our college there's a kind of energy and the vibe that we both get when passing through that road because the idea of green ecom solutions it was laid between those walls the foundation of the company was there itself with the help of the eminent faculties you know the infrastructure that they had provided uh uh you know the environment that was there the collaborative environment you know many of us you know might not be knowing that we did our first project building performance analysis in the final year under nagrale sir and he was very supportive in you know in those in mat uh, maturity of those ideas as well so green econs extension is just uh you know an extension of those ideas which took shape in the form of a company at the later stages so for today's presentation i had thought that we'll be you know introducing you all to the green ecom solution for 5 minutes how the company was formed what was the thought process uh, you know behind starting this company what we wanted to achieve right then we'll come to the core sector of us that is bim and we will introduce you to the basics of bim what bim is and why we you know wanted to start into this particular division that is building information modeling and then to the center of the topic that is beyond bim what lies beyond this particular technology and how we are seeing the construction sector maturing in terms of technology in the next 5 to 10 years what lies beyond us right then in in a short period we will also be introducing to to you all with the projects that we have done where we have implemented these technologies and in the end we will be happy to you know take a, take up some queries right so i'll quickly start with today's you know presentation so so to give you all a background of green ecom solutions you know we are two directors in the company like you all know uh, myself and aniket nampalliwar we are from a batch of 2010 to 14 we graduated we were studying our civil engineering in uh, aissms college of engineering then you know somewhere around in 2013 the idea of green ecom solutions had started taking shape both of us wanted to do something you know for the construction industry we thought if you notice the construction industries in the west or in the you know european markets i would say they they are a tad lot different from what we do here we had realized like you know in the past two centuries uh, you know the it industry had taken a giant leaps if you will say that you know the any industry 
uh, which has taken which has developed a lot in the past few years is the it industry india as a country we had made tremendous progress in in it as well as aerospace industry and what we felt that you know this change will affect construction industry as well we noticed the technologies being used uh, in the european and the western markets but we felt that you know there is a time for a change in the indian construction industry as well so we felt that we wanted to contribute to this change right there in the engineering college so we accordingly started planning for our final year project that we want to do something which will be beneficial for the society we wanted to do something new so we started our research into that particular field and we came up to you know that building performance analysis was our final year project so we wanted to analyze buildings in terms of energy analysis and to do the intense energy calculations you need to have a lot of information about the building hence we zeroed down our research on you know building information modeling in tandem with the building performance analysis so that became our core thought process then and there itself in the college so you know we uh, did our final year project you know we graduated from the college and immediately in 2015 we started our company so many of you might be thinking you know straight away from the college we directly started our company with zero experience so we both knew that we have to you know run fast in in doing that process since you know we came out as the freshers from the college we had to take a lot of experience in field as well and also we realized that for example if we are starting a new a new particular field in the industry there should have been a demand in the market as well since very few people were aware of using these modern trends and the technologies so we had to make people aware as well so parallelly we did some contracting projects as well at that stage we did a lot of projects uh, you know which are not the part of this resume it's small construction projects we did some contracting as well and gradually we were doing some bim projects as well so the company formed in 2015 and we you know uh, came into existence as a private limited company in 2017 right so parallelly what we decided is that we both also need to do some specialization so uh, since the core of the green ecom solutions lies on the sustainability that i'll also cover in the next few chapters so aniket did his masters in sustainable architecture at that time i was handling the company and when i went for my masters in nikmar you know then uh, at that time aniket was handling the company so we kind of overlapped there it so you know so that the company started running and post, post 2017 18 so we went all guns into the market and you know since then we are promoting this particular company so you know then uh, so the idea of green ecom solutions lies on a very simple three phenomena we want wanted to keep the technology simple so that everyone can use it we wanted to uh, use the latest tech available in the industry you know the maximum use of the smart ideas but for us everything is smart only if it is sustainable because we strongly believe in the idea of what use is smart if it is not sustainable what use is sustainable if it is not efficient because you know if you look at the technology uh, you know if we are investing into a particular technology it has to be sustainable not in terms of only building design or you know improving the electrical efficiency it has to be sustainable in end to end processes the time when the design has been concepted till the time the building is you know its entire life cycle even after the construction even in the facility management phase a building has to perform sustainably so that can also only be achieved by use of smart building ideas right so for us the technology is that so you know taking it further you know i would like to introduce you all the building information modeling how we came up to that particular technology so let us see how technology has revolutionized the way we design in the past few years now every one of us must be familiar with this image in the 60s or 70s we were using the drafters you know if a mega project is there a lot of architects and engineers used to design building like this right so uh, an entire team of you know specialized architects and engineers used to design different sheets and uh, you know an um, an impression of it is still in our engineering colleges right we all use uh, you know uh, the sheets and use the graphics design i guess we do in the first year of engineering that is still there right so what changed when the first personal computers came into beginning if you'll see in the late 1970s and the early 1980s you know the first computers came personal computers came into existence it also changed the way we design so around the same period the first cad softwares had come into existence and if you look the past 10 years 
we have seen a lot of development in terms of you know last 10 20 years we have started use of autocad and you know uh, similar platforms in terms of computer aided designs so what changed in this this year you know a big leap in the technology was happening so we knew that you know since the technology is changing every day even if you see that you know we were using small nokia phones back in 2007 8 and now we are using smartphones in the same hands right so what changed the technology behind the microprocessors and everything the entire it industry changed and which also has impacted the other sectors as well the same also happened with the design industry we were using uh, we were designing on the sheets the technology changed we started designing on the computer aided platforms and the technology since was ever improving so we also felt that you know we also have to use this technological change into the civil design industry so you know uh, so the new next big thing in the civil design industry was bim so that is building information modeling now personally i would tell you that uh, i feel the information is at the very core of it if you will see like i gave an example of uh, uh, sm uh, smartphones you know earlier in the nokia phones you had some limited amount of information in the palm of your hand so what changed as the technology started improving you started putting more information in those in, uh, you know in in your palm of the hands so the uh, smartphone started improving more now you have access to mails contacts and what not even you know the cell phones are acting as a small computers nowadays same started happening with the, happening with the design industry as well earlier there were lots of sheets on which we were drafting right so the information of a construction project was spread across a multiple of sheets right so in order to access that information on the site was also very tedious also very tedious processes that is why the mega projects used to take a lot of amount of time in the construction because the information was very scattered so right from the conception of that information to the production of that information to the execution of that information the time period was huge but when the technology changed and we started designing over the cad platforms you know it also eased eased down the information access now we were designing into cad sheets so we had access to more information in less amount of time so building construction also became much more faster much more quicker and much more qualitative i would say so uh, so uh, as the technology started progressing building information modeling is the next future i would say so now what is building information modeling we started putting in more information into those 2d cad designs this is how a typical 2d cad designs looks like so what if i have to you know input more information of construction into this particular screen i will start designing into 3d so what i'll do is i'll give it the information of three dimensions so in the in a single screen you can see a floor plate of a building has been designed into 3d right giving it an extra dimension of height also what if you know i also overlay the mep information in it all of you must be knowing that building is not only about architecture and structural designs it is also about the a lot of engineering disciplines as well it also has in it the mep designs as well so what if i am overlaying that information also in the same in the same screen in the same designs so i have access to much more information there right so this is how from a floor plate to a, the entire building can be viewed in three dimensions right so what we were doing if the same building has to be designed with the conventional platforms like the typical 2d cad designs so there will be multiple sheets multiple design files there but now in a single virtual model i have the access to all the information of the design what if apart from a building we can take it much more further the entire project setup can be designed so this is the particular project 50 acres of national law university which we had done so the all the project information was in a single file so the all the drawings all the specification sheets all the clash free models everything was there so what happened was the construction processes uh, started becoming much more faster now since you know the construction site has to only access one single model they can get all the information at one single place right if you will see the entire mep information here we have we, we have shown that it is there in the single model right all the site site infra and the site services are all already there right so the question arises why bim what apart from information we can add what apart from geometrical designs we can add to that particular information model 
So that the answer, you know, I have already highlighted that it is a single point information. That is why it is the key. So the information is key. The key is not we are designing into 3D. The, the key is that we are putting more and more information there. So as the technology will improve over the period of time further, we will be overlaying more and more information in that single digital model. So that, that is why I believe that BIM is the next future of the construction industry. And we already have uh, you know, seen the glimpses of BIM being used in the construction industry. Even the governments have started pushing it now more. So, you know, apart from the, since, you know, the CAD designs give us a typical uh, geometrical information that we can design it into 3D, right? The first thing. Second thing is the material specifications. What if, you know, uh, instead of having the multiple Excel sheets of uh, BOQs, bill of quantities, what if I attach also that to the uh, geometrical models, right? Agar hum, Kuna, for example, in a 3D model, if I go to a particular window, I select that window and it will tell me where to purchase it. What is the dimension of it? What is the warranty of it? If it is in a particular pump in a building, mein laga hai. so you know when it was purchased, till when is the warranty? So all the non-geometrical information I can also attach. right? So I am reducing the hassle of multiple sheets and multiple data silos in a construction project. The third comes the clash-free designs. So what used to happen on a typical construction project, which is, you know, challenging, there are multiple services that are also running. Agar aap ek building ka design dekhenge, there is an architect who is designing the building. There is a structural engineer who is, you know, giving the structural analysis. There is an engineer for HVAC services, for heating ventilation services. One engineer is designing the entire plumbing. One is designing the entire firefighting. So there are different design silos which are coming just in design also. Right. So all the information gets together and we design a building. But when a complicated building is getting designed, so there are various clashes that are coming in, inside a project. And what used to happen is when we move to the construction site, right? So the engineer on site or the project manager on site used to find that clashes. And then he used to get to the respective design consultant. I, uh, I guess many of us are familiar that construction sites, the job information, jata, there is a lot of delay that is happening because the project manager is detecting that then he's coming back to the design engineers he's asking them just so sorry for the disturbance here am i audible yeah. yes yes yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Yeah. so a lot of uh, you know different designers are giving in the information a clash is detected a lot of time is being wasted right in in the improvement of the design i would say so what we started doing is we started designing all the services into 3d we used to detect all the clashes before the execution of the project. So what we, what we you know, uh, market ourselves as we, you, we are giving the 100% clash-free designs. So when you move into the execution of a project, all your job is to just see the drawing, just see the model and start executing it, right? And in some of the projects, we have delivered that, right? Now coming back to the next segment, that is accurate and quick quantity takeoffs. So even if you'll notice when the design is getting revised over construction project again and again, again and again, the quantity surveyor only will, you know, take out the quantities once or twice because it takes enormous amount of time to take out the quantities as well. So what started happening is since we are designing into 3D, we are also putting the material information there. So this is a typical quantity sheet which comes out from our software, what we are using for the design. So all the building elements which have been designed individually, we can extract the quantities out of it, right? So extraction of quantities is also quick time. So even if we want to you know, get the quantities of block estimates of the projects are also much more accurate. You won't believe that in some of the construction projects, we were comparing the traditional versus building information model, modeling technologies. The quantity difference was close to 25 to 30%. Because we saw that, you know, the quantities were taken at a later stage, the small, small design improvements kept on happening. And once we reached at a final stage, there was around 30% of the variation. So even the BIM helps us in, you know, mitigating those particular quantity detections. Visualization. Now, earlier, you must have all seen, you know, the flexes on the roads where a visualization of the building is happening from two or three different per perspectives. Now, since we are designing into 3D, the construction sites and all the stakeholders of a project have a real time information of the project. They can visualize, they can cut sections from any given plane that they wish. If a construction engineer feels that I want to visualize building from 
a particular location we can give, give him the access of that particular view so the construction become even more faster since the on site execution people have a better visualization of the what what is going to be built right intuitive schedule planning we all learn the cpmm and per techniques in the you know engineering colleges even if you notice the softwares for the same are msp or the prime vera which are being dominantly used from the past 10 to 20 years we are using that right but even the designing into 3d has impacted a lot in intuitive schedule planning so what we do is the these 3d building elements they get linked with the individual schedule elements uh, schedule uh, activities for example an activity is the an activity is foundation works from foundation footing first to 50 so i'll attach that particular activity to the respective footing sets so what will start happening is we can track the progress of the schedule also in three dimensions right for example if i want to see that at at say 100 days from the execution start what will be the status of the project i can quickly i can quickly see it even for example the uh, the management of the you know uh, construction project they can have a better view in understanding the schedule because if the schedule is in a two dimensional format it becomes very cumbersome to interpret it right so even the schedule getting linked into 3d have enormous amounts of benefits that we started utilizing of the construction projects so if we are planning the schedule linking the schedule with the 3d elements it quickly also you know gives us the opportunity to access the cost in the three dimensions so different project designs can be you know will be giving us the different quantities the different quantities can be linked with the uh, basic cost that we have for a project and the should and the cost management also becomes much more intuitive so this is what we call as you you know the five dimensional bim costing so taking it further you know the bim data the 3d designs can also be used for the sustainability analysis so this was the first project that we did in ai sms we uh, you know myself and aniket didn't start only with 2d and 3d we directly jumped to the sixth dimension sixth dimension of the design that is sustainability so what we did in this is for example a building is getting designed into 3d so based on based on the local geometry uh, local weather data for example we can also see you know at a given time in a given year what will be the position of sun over the building so how it is affecting the shadows in the building right so based on that the rooms inside the building can also be planned much more efficiently right the rooms which we require that should use maximum amount of natural light in the months of you know either december or you know when the summers are there we can plan those accordingly it's not only about the shadows we can also access you know uh, how the wind circulation will be inside the building taking it also further we can in, we can analyze the entire impact of the you know energy gains inside the building as well as the energy spent we can design buildings much more efficiently by use of bim data so this also we started doing that in the so like all i also mentioned that building processes should not only be limited from conception of design to the execution phase a much larger picture also lies while in the facility management stage you all must be you know uh, surprised to know that 70% of the building costs lies in the facilities management because uh, once the handover it uh, handover is done there are huge amounts of costs that the building has to you know adopt in in its entire life cycle so we also started to uh, you know uh, we wanted to impact that particular division also so what if the building three dimensional designs which have all the information right can get can link can be linked with the facilities management software so also i would like to highlight one more point since all the information of a building was into one single particular project file the handovers also become much more easy Ear earlier what used to happen is when the handover of the building is used to be given to the client a lot of sheets and lot of specification data warranties used to be exchanged because the information was in too much of different silos which used to be presented to the client right so when we started linking you know uh, the 3d data with the facilities management software the handover become uh, handover became only in a one single file right that we that is the bim file that we developed right so uh, you all must uh, must be hearing a lot of 3d 4d 5d 60 and 70 these are in short what 
each particular dimension means. So 3D is all about filling in the geometrical information in a 2D design. So once the 3D design is done, which lies at the very core of it, you can you, you can use that 3D design in analysis for time, for money, for sustainability, and facility management. So that becomes 4D, 5D, 6D, and 7D respectively, right? So, you know, we were always very curious since, you know, these ideas we had since college, like it has been more than seven years. So we wanted to come to the uh, college and wanted to present our ideas for the future. These services, Green Ecom Solutions is already given, right? What lies beyond? What is, you know, what we will be seeing in the next five, seven, 10 years down the line. So this, we, you know, we, within our company also research on a continuous basis. And we also try to educate our industry based on the latest trends. And we also start adopting these latest techniques within our company. So, you know, we were very curious in giving this presentation to the, you know, budding engineers, I would say. So now our vision is integrated building management. So like I said, we don't want to limit ourselves only till the execution phase. It has to be end to end. The entire life cycle has to be end, end to end. So, you know, you all must be seeing that, you know, design offices are at a different location, construction site is at a different location. So there are so much of information gaps within, within, a, within an execution of a project. So we wanted to mitigate those gaps. We wanted that design and construction should be part of one activity. So since the technology has improved a lot in the past years, you know, uh, we have access to cloud information is there, cloud platforms are there. So we, uh, we also wanted to adopt more of these within the company and for our clientele as well, so that the, the, uh, the barrier between the design offices and the construction sites get removed. So the first step that we have taken towards it is common data environment. Now, what is common data environment, right? So consider that this particular 3D BIM file that we have created, right? It is on a, on a cloud platform, like just similar like Google Drive or OneDrive for Microsoft. Right, it, that file is being kept on a common data environment, and all the different stakeholders of a project. Let it be the design engineers, the execution engineers, the survey people, the you know site supervisors. Everyone has that information to that model, right? Although the information will be limited depending on the you know hierarchical or how much amount of information we want to share, right? Between those protocols, what if everyone has that access to that information, right? So that even the time gets further reduced in taking a screenshot, doing a mail, generating an RFI. So that time is also saved when we start using these common data platforms. So also the, um, these we also started using actively within our organization. And we have also started promoting it to our clientele as well now. So that let's come on a common platform and start designing much more intuitively. Now taking it further, uh, what was the next step? You know, these are some of the glimpses of the common data environment itself. You can see on the screen that you know, the RFIs are being raised in a common data platform. So for example, let's say I have an issue in a particular design. So I will just click on that particular segment of a 3D model. I'll highlight, I'll tag the particular design engineer there. So in the dashboard, it, it, it is seen always as live that, okay, I have this particular information pending. He can till the time he, that information is not closed or the solution is not given. It will be seen as that, right? So this is also one more use of common data environment. You all must have seen these particular kind of devices like AR, VR, mixed reality devices are coming in the market now. I think uh, recently GeoGlass had also given a glimpse. I think if it is compatible with the three dimensional uh, softwares, I think it will be a tremendous boost in the construction industry as well. What if the entire 3D designs can be projected on the live site, which we have shown here, right? So I have multiple devices in my hand, Right, I'm projecting my 3D model on the site. I can directly, you know, see that duct here should go here, but it went here. So the mistakes also get much more visible. So I can directly tag that particular element. Then and there itself, I can highlight it to the design engineer. No need of getting back to the site office and you know tagging that particular thing and uh, generating that RFI. So the technology is slowly moving into that particular direction. Right live progress capture now with the help of drones this we have already started drones and 360 degree cameras those are you know a new tech in the market so these can also be utilized for the construction industry 
what if we are capturing the live information let's say on a weekly basis daily basis or a fortnightly basis on a construction site we can create the entire 3d model out of it right so the entire 3d model can be generated from the scans that have been taken by the drones and by the 360 degree cameras that information can be captured against the bim model that we have produced and we can track the progress of a construction project that how much amount of it has been done what is the tentative costing that is the, uh, that is there we can do the entire billing from those scans by measuring the amount of work done right so all in all the processes have become much more integrated lean progress management now what is lean lean activities right so the lean is you know we start we start optimizing the construction uh, construction schedules more and more right so uh, if you look at a conventional de- uh, you know schedule designing processes you will see that a planning engineer hota hai that you know he is designing the entire schedule uh, you know he is getting the queries from the site acha site pe kitna kaam ho gaya he maps that particular information and he says that okay 20% of the project is completed but all in all in this entire process is one or two or three people are doing it it is not a collaborative thing right so what if the entire schedule is on a cloud cloud platform and i am able to tag okay like contractor 1 has to do these 10 activities contractor 2 has to do these 10 activities what if i can link that and as soon as the uh, as a particular activity starts that particular contractor can click on that activity and say okay i have started this activity if that activity is starting as a delayed activity he can also mention the reason there by so and so reason the activity was delayed like you know the workers were not there there were design issues or something so we can capture that information as well so all in all the schedule gets more collaborative because each individual stakeholder of that particular execution activity is inputting his particular you know uh, the work that he needs to do so what happens is in the entire dashboards we see the schedule in these formats so you know as a project manager or as a you know man, uh, manager of a particular company i can directly see okay how much amount of work has been done which particular activities are getting delayed which contractor is slow how much amount of rfis were raised but are not closed how much amount of you know issues are due to design so that i can take much more information informative decisions for example in a conventional uh, schedule designing process i have to highlight okay you know since there are so many design issues and that is why the project is getting delayed it is mainly due to my intuition okay we are bar bar design change ho raha hai isliye design engineer ki galti but now with the lean pro, uh, you know lean scheduling platforms we are able to uh, you know plan the projects much more collaboratively and more than that we are able to track that much more collaboratively so taking it further if the schedule is getting tracked collaboratively the cost control is much more efficient right so i exactly know till date how much amount of my construction project is completed which contractor has done how much amount of work and i can plan my budgets my cash flows in that particular manner right so it also started improving the cloud based uh, you know quality control platforms were coming and it also started improving much more qualities uh, quality over a construction project for example if there is a software i'm going on site you know an engineer has to check a particular uh, you know particular area fill that checklist click a picture and then upload it till that time you know that particular uh, area will not be handed over so we can control the amount of checks a particular area is going through what are the different checks hierarchy that is uh, that is happening over a uh, over a particular area and we can have much more tighter controls over the cloud uh, over the qualities of a construction project right so that is also one more extension which we will be seeing getting implemented on a construction site now digital twin this is a very latest technology uh, that will be coming you know down the line in a construction industry we all will be seeing what is happening traditionally is now is the 3d model the bing building information model that we have created at the facility management stage uh, you know it is giving me a static information that for example let's say pump ka warranties kab hai let's say ahu ka warranty kab hai yeah you know uh, these desks were uh, procured from which particular manufacturer so that amount of static information it is giving 
what if it can also be linked with the bms platform so build bms is a building management system platform which controls the entire facility for the um, for the engineers in the house so what is for example uh, if there it is an hotel building or an it building so all the mechanical processes of uh, processes of a building are getting controlled by a one particular location that is bms room jahan se sare cctv cameras ka feed aata hai वहीं पर यू नो द स्टेटस ऑफ ऑल द पंप्स एएचयूज आर गेटिंग डिलीवर्ड देयर राइट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ अ पर्टिकुलर वॉल्व इज ब्रोकन दैट इंफॉर्मेशन गेट्स देयर ओके सो एंड सो वॉल्व इज ब्रोकन देयर राइट सो व्हाट इफ वी कैन यू नो टैग दैट बीएमएस इंफॉर्मेशन डायरेक्टली विद द 3D मॉडल विल गेट डैशबोर्ड्स लाइक दीस सो ऑल द सेंसर डेटा टेंपरेचर डेटा ह्यूमिडिटी डेटा व्हाटएवर द स्मार्ट डिवाइसेस इंस्टॉल्ड इन द बिल्डिंग आर जनरेटिंग अ डेटा दैट कैन बी यू नो uh overlapped with the 3d model so that we can have a better view of the facility now the advantages are so for example <clears throat> if a pump malfunctions at a particular location and it is a huge facility so i'll directly take, take out a work order i'll give a call to a particular guy and i'll say ki yaar so and so pump has been broken aap aake theek kar lijiye he'll come to the site he'll see okay pump kharab ho gaya सो हिल से सर पंप में तो ये पर्टिकुलर वॉल्व खराब हो गया है या इसको एक्सेस करने के लिए एक सीडी लगेगा या सो एंड सो टूल्स विल बी रिक्वायर्ड राइट बिकॉज ही डिडेंट हैव दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन इन थ्री डायमेंशन बिफोर हैंड ही केम टू द साइट ही एक्सेस इज दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन ही गोज प्रोक्योर्स द मटीरियल देन ही कम्स एंड रेक्टिफाइज इट वॉट इफ इन द थ्री डायमेंशन एवरी पार्ट ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर पंप इवन इज यू नो मैप देर एंड आई हैव द एग्जैक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन की ये पंप से तीन मीटर हाइट पे है या कहाँ पर है you know that particular uh, uh, you know element has malfunctioned i can directly give him that information then and there itself on a cloud platform so that he can come with his tools and toolkits and come directly on the site and you know have the uh, quickly resolve that particular issue so even digital twins are have far more benefits in the construction industry this technology is already being used in the aerospace industry if you see that you know the entire space stations or the entire spacecraft they are getting controlled from the base stations right so this is exactly what it is right we are controlling the entire facility from a different location from a different area in three dimensions right so this will be one of the key technologies that will be coming in the future this is just one more glimpse of the same technology digital twin so the next technology that we are also interested in is the data analytics now you all must be thinking that data analytics is ye it ka division hai right but it is not the case data analytics play a key role in the you know dis, uh, decision making processes of a construction project right let's say for example uh, i am a company i do like say 100 projects in a particular year and i have so much of data that is coming in and with the help of building information modeling i am i am getting even further data right so in indian construction industries we have very you know the uh, the data is in different silos ya to wo site ke register mein reh jata hai ya to kisi hard copy mein reh jata hai even the companies which are very advanced in uh, you know the big names in the indian construction industry they are recording a lot of data in the excel sheets right but वट आर वी डूइंग विद दैट डेटा फॉर एग्जाम्पल आज तक मैंने अगर हंड्रेड प्रोजेक्ट या थाउजेंड प्रोजेक्ट कंप्लीट किए हैं आर एम आई यूजिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर इन्फॉर्मेशन टू यू नो डिजाइन और फिल टेंडर्स मच मोर एक्यूरेटली और यू नो डू एनी काइंड ऑफ डिसीजन एनालिसिस फॉर द फ्यूचर प्रोजेक्ट एम आई डूइंग दैट द आंसर इज नो राइट सो वॉट वॉट वी आर थिंकिंग ऑल्सो इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी आर कलेक्टिंग एज मच एज इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन द साइड लेट्स ए लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टेंडर फिल्डिंग टेंडर फिलिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक पर्टिकुलर प्रोजेक्ट में मैंने लाइक फिफ्टी रुपीज से स्टील का रेट दिया था वेन द मार्केट रेट ऑफ स्टील वॉज से थर्टी फाइव रुपीज एंड प्रोजेक्ट एग्जीक्यूशन का प्रॉफिट मार्जिन जोड़ के आई हैव कोटेड इट फिफ्टी रुपीज नाउ द स्टील रेट हैज कम फ्रॉम थर्टी फाइव टू लेट से फोर्टी फाइव सो देर विल बी अगेन अ कैलकुलेशन विच आई विल बी डूइंग विच इज करंटली अ लॉट ऑफ लॉट ऑफ दोज आर मैनुअल कैलकुलेशन बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट स्टील रेट अ लॉट ऑफ अदर थिंग्स हैव ऑल्सो चेंज let's say gst has come into picture and there are huge amounts of different external factors also which have played its impact on the rates right on a construction site maybe the salaries of the you know steel uh, bar bender or something a lot of variations are there but do we take into account those things not because it is too difficult to you know uh, input that much of information and at, arrive at a decision making so what data analytics is helping is you collect as much as information as a company 
uh, you know, you start collecting the information fast and then you start churning that data so that you can uh, take decisions much more accurately there. So this, uh, uh, with the passage of time, with, with, with the advancement in more technologies, we will be seeing use of much more data analytics in the coming future. So all in all, you know, the entire end-to-end -end processes were, you know, much more collaborative. That this is what technology is helping us. Again, giving the example of a cell phone, pehle landline phones hote the, you know, we used to remember the numbers ek directory mein likhe hote the. We used to interact in a certain way. Now, because of smartphones, there are so many applications which also came into picture, Facebook, WhatsApp, and whatnot, right? So we started interacting as a human being in a different manner. So as the technology will improve over the period of time, the construction processes, the interaction over a construction project will also keep on improving with time. So, uh, you know, that is our take on the beyond BIM. We will also be, you know, happy to learn from the budding engineers with our faculties at the end of the presentation. Before that, I wanted to just quickly run you all through, through our offerings and the projects that we have done up till now. So, as Green Ecom Solutions, we do the complete building information modeling, like 3D to the highest details we do. We do the entire 4D, 5D, 6D, and 7D services. We do the complete scan to BIM through drones and those particular areas. We also do green building designs and consultation. The entire energy analysis of a project we do, we do energy audits, we do traffic and vehicular simulation studies. So that is all together a different particular domain. So I think the time is time will not permit us to go into that particular domain. So we have just uh, you know kept the kept it to a very initial level of discussions in the building information modeling so that we can educate everyone regarding the BIM. So also we do some uh, amount of project management solutions because interpretation of that particular building information model has to be presented into into a certain manner. So that is why I've written like you know project management solutions. We also do a lot of drone surveys. We also do right. So this is a small portfolio of ours. We have done more than 9 million square feet of BIM consultation. If I have to highlight uh, more than 6 million square feet we have done in the past two years. So this is Maharashtra National Law University, Nagpur. It's a 50 acres of campus and we have designed one single uh, BIM model for this particular project. If you see that uh, this particular uh, model, there were different uh, you know, levels of uh, levels of FFLs there in a particular project in the huge campus, right? Because they have maintained the site topography at, as it is. So uh, the execution was also very difficult. So even with the help of the building information modeling, the execution also went much more smoother. So this is also MEP information modeling uh, in that particular project for a single building. So this is the entire campus of 50 acres. We have also done, uh, you know, uh, Tata Memorial Hospital in uh, Mumbai, and this project is still running. It is almost on the verge of completion now. So this is the entire MEP information that we have done. If you look very closely, the, I'll just zoom in into this particular picture that, you know, each and every building element was modeled here uh, for the MEP services. So what we did is in a hospital, there are so many services apart from conventional building services that are running. So the entire designs were made clash free by us. So the clash free drawings then uh, have to go into the execution phase so that, like I said, the only job at the site will be just to quickly execute the project. So this is the complete MEP information for the uh, Tata Memorial Hospital. So we were also involved in one of the prestigious projects, the Salt Reliance Aerospace Limited. So these are the, in this facility, the Rafale planes also will be getting maintained as well as, you know, it is a part of offset deal of the salt aviation. So the new Falcon planes will also be getting manufactured there. So even if you look at the design, we have also modeled the supports in this particular design. That is LOD 500, like highest detail uh, in the modeling. So even the nuts and bolts, the cassette plates and everything, everything was modeled here. And the entire quantity were taken out from the 3D model. So these are the same images of uh, Dissolved Reliance Aerospace Limited. So you'll see the entire, you know, HVAC systems and the lighting systems, everything was modeled here. So it is exactly the replica of what, it, what is going to be built on site. So if we have to compare on the left-hand side is the actual image of the facility. We couldn't click much more pictures because it's a very confidential project. So on the right-hand side is the uh, BIM model project, what we have done for the facility. So we were also involved in Detoiler Pharma. It's a pharmaceutical project. 
so if you look at the entire mep that that has been done on this particular project you can you know see different elements different cooling towers pumps all even the walls have been modeled for the pumps and everything so this is point cloud to bim data we were doing it in an initial phase we are also doing it now on a full fledged scale that we uh, scan the existing facilities for example what if the um, you know heritage buildings let's say for example jinke designs thing so what we do is we do the complete scans of the building and then we produce the 3d bim designs out of it so that uh, the client can have the exact information in terms of geometrical designs that were built in some past era right so also this is a sample uh, picture that we can compare different project progress uh, you know we have clicked uh, pictures through drones or 360 degree cameras we can compare both of the information let's say on the left hand side uh, this is a on a particular day and what what was it here a month before so that can be compared the same pictures can be compared against the bim model so that if any deficiencies are there between the design as well as on the execution uh you know we can do that so clash detection coordination typically how we do so these are the reports that are generated you know you can click on a report you will go to a particular location ki clash kahan par hai so the you know it becomes much more easy we input a lot of information on the 3d elements ab 3d elements pe click karke jitna information aap dalna chahte hain aap dal sakte hain upar so these are typical clash reports some glimpses of the energy modeling this was our first energy modeling project ksb pumps in pune so uh, we got in touch with the architect so he wanted to analyze the amount of solar uh, solar radiation coming on different facades and the roof of the building so we had been anal analyzing that based on that ki kitna insulation facade pe lagega kitna roof pe lagega based on that we were able to you know calculate that so this is again uh, sun path analysis for a remand project that we have done so lux level like amount of sunlight kitna aayega uski wajah se andar roshni kitni rahegi ek particular project mein that we also analyze so this is for one of the educational campuses let's say it's a 50 acre of campus or a even huge campus so um, uh, how the buildings will be aligned so that study we also do uh, if you can see uh, in the month of july the facade of the building is well shaded with its natural form but in the january when the winters are there it is receiving that natural sunlight so all those calculations we also do right so deva headquarters mumbai it is one of the prestigious projects that we are involved in it is a net zero building under lead uh, which is being built in dubai it is by the dubai government so what we had to do is there is a particular phenomena we call it as thermal bridging which happens in a building so we had to analyze it for that so the entire so the suggestion of the alternatives had to be done and you know the with the entire thermal imaging and everything we study those particular segments how we can optimize that so the wind studies we also do like i said for the entire sustainability analysis this one was for also for ksb pumps jaise aap dekh sakte hain like in the interiors there was no wind circulation but when we analyzed and redesigned the openings for them there was enough wind circulation inside the facility so typical aqueous calculations that how much amount of water is going to be utilized in the building how much of it we can save the entire gray water calculations and natural water calculations that we all do that are required for uh, igbc grey hour lead so that also we do artificial lighting calculations you can see ki kitne lights hai particular space mein dene padenge to achieve a particular luminescence so that also we analyze so all in all the idea of green ecom solutions was always to you know make construction processes much more smoother and better so that you know we also uh, time to time scrutinize our processes ki hum kaise efficient ban sakte hain and similar processes we try to adopt for our clientele as well so that you know how we can make construction process is much more smoother so these are some of the brief of the major projects uh, that we have done diamond towers in pune deva headquarters mumbai and uh, most of the projects i have explained in the portfolio <coughs> so these are some of the uh, you know uh, esteemed clientele that we have we have signed an mou with tata projects that the entire bim works for the tata we shall be doing we are associated with desolt aviation with suraj build con and a number number of other contractors and consultants and most of Uh, these consultants and contractors we have signed the mou we are designing their entire 3d and we are involved in the clash detection giving quantities and all the services that we have explained so why today what was the objective uh, you know how uh, you know we wanted to launch trick as well so trick 
is the latest inception of ours that is talent recruitment and incubation center so what we have started doing is uh, since in the past 2 years we have signed a lot of mous and most of the indian construction companies let's say lnt tata projects spcl they all want to imbibe bim within themselves like we have signed the mou with tata projects so there is a huge quantum of work that is you know getting into the bim technologies and we still feel that there is a gap in terms of skill set between the you know the available resources in the market as well as what the industry has started demanding so we start we thought you know up till now we were educating corporates so why not students since because they are the future of the you know industry i still think myself as you know when we were in issms and jab wo idea aaya tha hum kaise kaise wo idea imbibe hua and that point we have reached till now so there was always a certain thing ki you know the skill set in the market should also improve so even the people who are getting trained in the three dimensional software they should be trained to the company uh, standards so that they can be a quick resource for the industry so we just now thought you know a month back let's start because we also have huge amounts of you know recruitment requirements that will be coming in the couple of months since we have signed multiple of mus so we wanted to start with a fresh pool of engineers to, we wanted to educate them on the all these processes that we have learned so we started with a one month of internship course and we started to come to uh, wanted to come to a college and what can be better than the ais sms because we have a you know connection of a heart with the ais sms because that echo that frequency that energy still resonates within us that because the idea of green ecom solutions was incepted with right so we started with a one month of uh, uh, we have started with a one month of rapid internship course basically mainly limited to architecture and structural for student school uh, skill development if you will see what we have thought is we don't want to be a training center that is very clear we just want to you know educate students a very handful of students so that they can be uh, you know uh, so that the they are good to go in the industry so with the start we will be limiting our batch only to 10 students in one session and there won't be any trainer that will be educating them it will be the company in employees even you know myself and aniket will also be involved in the in those sessions so the sessions will be on weekends there will be three hour sessions on each weekend so saturday and sunday so in short 24 hours of in house training but in the weekdays there will you know the assignments will be given and those won't be like simple assignments of a bungalow or something it will be the projects that we have already executed so the projects the complexity that i have just showcased you uh you know in our portfolio you uh, the students shall be working on those particular assignments and you know uh once there is a chance that we shall be you know recruiting some students out of that talent pool and even some students will be getting an opportunity for a free 3 months of advanced internship right but we are you know uh, i wanted to keep it as minimum as possible for the course fees so uh, the prices are in front on the screen uh, we usually charge typically uh, 40000 for corporates but i wanted to keep it as minimum as possible for the assms students so because the idea is not to you know be just like a regular training institute and give a three dimensional teaching we want you to learn all of these uh, all of these particular trades and the part which will not be covered in a, in the, these particular sessions you will be given a glimpse and how to approach that particular segment so that is all in all about us so it is always green ecom solutions private limited and the tagline has always been changing the way world designs that lies to the very core of us and that was all about us thank you so much uh, the entire ai ssms team for giving us the opportunity to present ourselves thank you so much for your time and for your patience thank you everyone please feel free to ask any questions if you have i'll be happy to answer thank you thank you sir this was really a quite unique and informative session for us moving ahead with the session i would like to call rohit raut to ask the questions from our curious minds attending the session over to you rohit uh thank you so much sir sanket that was truly a very informative and very intriguing session so uh, the my first question to you sir Uh, so how do one get uh, started with bim see yeah a very good question in fact see bim is not a single software it is a typical you know it's an ocean of technology so there are so many softwares which come together to start the bim right 
like i also explained in my presentation the core of the bm lies in the 3d modeling information because that is a particular stage in which we start get inputting more and more information till the time there is no 3d model you can't put in more information the access the access to that particular information and the analysis of that information that lies at a separate stage so i think everyone should start first initially how we do you know how we input that particular information uh, uh, and you know the creation of 3d designs is the first step i'll say so learning of any tool uh, you know which uh, which gives you which teaches you how to design into three dimensions put in more information there will be the first step for the for you know coming into the building information molding field right thank you thank you so much sir uh, so the next question is from uh, vaibhav more and he asked that uh, what will be your advice for students who are uh, looking for careers in a bim so uh, so that uh, that question resonates very much with the first question that i would suggest that you know you should start uh, getting introduced to the 3d design softwares because as the construction engineer as the construction engineers it is our responsibility to input much and much more information there because what starts happening is there are so many different design uh, stakeholders in a construction project so when that information comes together it is ultimately the construction engineer who is who takes the decision on site right so the the decision that he used to take on site now it is getting shifted to the design offices now much more and more so i think as civil engineers or uh, as architects or mechanical engineers electrical engineers everyone should start getting exposed to the you know three dimensional softwares so that will be my suggestion thank you so much sir so uh, our next question is from suyesh and he asked that Uh, what is your opinion about 3d printing of building and uh, will our country adopt this technology definitely see the adoption of technology is also very much correlated with the costs uh, you know and the flexibility that it is giving so 3d printing yes the demos have been done those are successful demos advanced demos have been done in some you know uh, uh, in the european and the western markets also and think i think this technology will start come and now see there are different phases of that particular technology and now what we are doing is we are design we are constructing the end to end buildings in the via 3d printing but, right so but at a block level if you will see 3d printing of say blocks or you know the precast in some ways slightly a form of that particular technology right so that technology has already started taking shape and yes we do see the future in 3d printing also and see even what we are imagining is how these this 3d data can get integrated with those uh, you know 3d printed robots and you know construct those buildings also so yes there is definitely a scope for it the research is being going on i think it will take some time to come you know uh, economically into the market okay sir so, uh, the next question uh, is from anush and he asks that uh, which software should we learn to keep update uh, in future see uh, There are so many uh, softwares in uh, market. Yeah, sorry, Ari. Uh, yeah. So uh, my suggestion will be choose a software based on its availability. Like, ah, uh, classes kiske pass hain. Like, ah, uh, how much amount of advanced faculties are there? Because, say, ah, uh, for example, a software in terms of techniques will be ninety out of hundred, and the other one might be eighty, eighty-five. Right. But if you don't have a service, it's not good. Right. Its institutes are not there. Doubts clear to make people are not there. So there is no fun in learning that software. I think predominantly in India for 3D design softwares, Revit is getting much more, you know, uh, usage. Even within our company, we try to use Autodesk platforms. Uh, it might not be that Autodesk is the best. Hoga. There might be, you know, similar platforms also, but it has much more coverage in India. Like many consultants are also using it. so it becomes much more flexible in adoption of that technology so in in terms of indian perspective i would suggest going for autodesk uh, products but it's not a limitation you can learn any so adding to rohit uh, there are also different uh, softwares as he said but important is that which is accepted by the whole market means if there is some software demand in market then you have to learn that software only so so that is a personal choice but we recommend to use autodesk Auto software and also you know once you learn a particular platform let's say it is as good as for example aapko android phone use karna hota hai 
राइट यू नो हाउ टू यूज द फोन आइकन्स कहां पर हैं एज सुन एज यू माइग्रेट टू दी आईफोन यू नो इट विल टेक यू हार्डली वन और टू डेज टू लर्न दैट सिमिलरली विथ थ्री डायमेंशनल सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू स्टार्ट विद दी रेविट यू स्टार्ट लर्निंग रेविट एंड लेट से आफ्टर टू थ्री ईयर्स इफ यू गेट इंट्रोड्यूस से आर की कैट सो यू नो यू मूव टू अ पर्टिकुलर कंपनी जहां आर की कैट यूज होता है इट टेक्स यू हार्डली से टेन फिफ्टीन डेज बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी नो द टेक्नोलॉजी इट इज जस्ट दैट वेयर दैट टेक्नोलॉजी इज प्लेस्ड इन दैट सॉफ्टवेयर रिमेन्स द की thank you so uh, the next question is from one of our team members only uh, sankit bhame and he asked that uh, sir in the beginning uh, you said that the structure should be sustainable if we are consider uh, considering them to be smart what should we keep in consideration while designing uh, designing if a project is to be uh, made smart and sustainable right so if uh... my personal take on that will be when when I, whenever we are using any technology it has to be end to end sustainable even if you'll see this uh, sustainability analysis when we do for a particular project let's say maine concrete bana diya jo ki mere hisab se sabse kam energy consume karta hai but agar main us concrete ko kerala se import karwa raha hu that is not sustainable right because the amount of effort the vehicles that are coming from kerala they are also emitting some amount of you know pollution they are also using some renewable resources non renewable resources so everything has to be calculated end to end so when i say in adoption of a particular technology or a particular field or a particular thing for a construction project it has to be end to end sustainable that how that is being created to how it is being executed to how it will be used in the facility management so any technology which is giving you all these all the yeses for these particular three questions i think we should adopt that particular technology if a technology which it seems that it is not efficient it is not sustainable in end to end processes i think we should not go for it because in the long run it will not be uh, uh, you know ado- uh, you you won't be adopting it for in a longer run yes thank you so much sir so the next question uh, is from rohan and he asked that how much roughly uh, do bim uh, bim cost in uh, in percentage of total project see um uh, to be very honest it's it's call uh, it's cost just peanuts over a construction project if you'll see it is just an engineering cost right we were doing something on the autocad software it is just adding a slight bit of cost over a construction project so there is no uh, you know uh, if i have to give you a range it might be costing around 0.5 maybe to 0.7 percent of a construction project maybe roughly but in terms of uh, you know usage or you know uh, the flexibility that it is giving over construction projects there have been independent studies which suggest that between 5 to 10 percent 15 percent it saves you a lot of costs end to end for example if you are making a building sustainable uh, through bim adoption i think it gives you around 15 20% of the savings over a construction project right so there there might be only 0.5% of a front end cost maybe on the higher side but i don't think uh, you know that is much more in compared to the other services which we are doing okay okay uh, sir we have a question from Uh, one of our participants and he asked that is there uh, and a, a very interesting question is there a need to practice a designing on paper or better to practice on a software see i i feel we can start directly on software but uh, traditionally we used to learn from how to draw things on paper but i personally this is my personal opinion we should start directly on software so which is very uh, intuitive for me sometimes some feel it is from we should start from scratch but that if uh, uh, at the end we, we are giving the deliverables from the software then why should not start from there only so even you know i'll extend this particular answer also of anikets that you know where is the first 3d that gets created when we see a particular drawing you know the first 3d gets created in the mind right you see a design even in while using the 3d software you have to see the drawing you have to understand what that particular section means then you have to design so the first 3d is getting designed here so now if you are not getting that clarity 
of designing the 3D of mind on the 3D of software, and you want to use an interim bridge of paper, you can very well do that. That that is a personal choice, I would say. For example, it is just like ki mere ko kuch notes likhne hai. How I feel comfortable, whether I feel it first on uh, paper and then I you know switch it on a phone on a digital format. So how I go about it. So if you uh, you know if you are much more comfortable in first doing the initial sketches on a paper. please go ahead if you are comfortable with the technology please do that but ultimately the end result is we have to design it in a 3d software so that is a personal choice uh sir one question from my side is it uh, there sure is it uh, to be mandatory to learn software as uh, ai and ar is the future uh, in the construction industry is it mandatory we should learn uh, some softwares see ai artificial intelligence and machine learning they are you know they run in tandem with the uh, data analytics so for example if you are going in a in an ai technology so for example if you want to learn any you know coding platform that is all together a different domain right that is the how i am interpreting that data so that is all together a different science of doing it if you want to stick to the engineering fields and you know you want to uh, generate that information for the processes that is altogether a different stream but yes ai if you want to go into that particular dimension that is also the future not not only in construction industry it is the future everywhere because even right from uh, electrical vehicles to automated vehicles to everything everything is controlled by ai right the computers have started interpreting it and making some decisions for us but yes but i also feel in terms of ai when ai is giving you a lot of decisions it is ultimately the human sitting to the other side of the computer that has to take a decision that has to say yes or no so to get that understanding the the core of the technology should be strong so if you are taking any decisions based on ai interpretation in civil engineering i think the core of civil engineering the design uh, the understanding of the design the you know how the building functions all that design uh, all that you know execution uh, decision making should be there before you know going into the ai field my personal suggestion i'm adding to uh, adding the point to the rohit uh, thing uh, is uh, we to learn the software or not is uh, actually a personal choice but what we feel to use those uh, technology we don't need to learn how that technology is uh, created we only we need to understand how to use that technology we, actually we are using the application of ai and uh, ar or vr so there is no need to learn those things but if someone is very interested in doing that he can dive much more deep, uh, into deeper into that application but yes we can use it if we get a one or two day training how to use ai and vr and on the site so that for that we only need a training session to use that technology yeah uh we have one more question uh, from one of uh, one of our participants named saili and sh uh, she asks how much difference in cost and time of the project while a uh, bim uh, with the traditional technology what is the difference in cost and time this is the first question that we are we get asked by the stakeholders so i'll just give you an example <laughs> a tip, let's imagine you know i i or because i also illustrate them with an example for example a project engineer finds one clash on the site right let's say hvac ka duct fire ke duct, uh, fire ke pipe ke sath clash kar raha and he gets that information on site he the first he'll thing he'll do is call the architect and call the hvac and the fire people to resolve that particular thing uske resolve uske phone karne se jab tak wo resolution aayega isme minimum to minimum one week jayega and agar you know for example if he needs to procure a different part for it so maybe 10 days 15 days this is just one issue on site one major issue on site as a thousands of issues are there for one issue you are taking uh, you know 10 days of time so let's say due to bim i am making your designs clash free right there is no there will not be any clash in the building right that is guaranteed so let's say i save only one month of your time just one month of your time so if you'll check the overheads crane ka cost vehicle ka cost employees ke salary and lots of overheads of a construction site for only one month forget about the uh, input cost raw cost of the materials just engineering cost for one month bim is cheaper than that 
right so if uh, so in terms of time i'll tell you uh, there was a particular project you know roughly we estimated we were able to save around 2 months of a time for a project of say uh, it was of around 18 months but if you have to analyze it end to end maybe you know in that same time span we were able to execute much more uh, you know uh, complex projects let's say like maharashtra national law university if you would have been doing it without bin time bahut zyada lag jata but we were able to complete it i guess within 18 to 20 months was the target so yes a lot of amount of time i would say in terms of percentage if i have to give you a number say around 10 15 20% 20%, between 10 to 20% you can say uh thank you so much sir i'll request if anyone from the participants have any questions or if they want to interact with our speakers they can raise their hand and our host will unmute them please ask your questions if anyone has So, uh, Vedan, do we see anyone raising their hand? Uh, no, Rohit. I think we'll just wait for two minutes. Uh, till then, let's take a photograph. Yeah. Uh, I request everyone to turn on your videos. We'll just take a photograph with speaker. okay uh, so we are done with the photograph uh, i don't see any hands raised so i think we should continue rohit yeah thank you uh, thank you so much sir for uh, giving such wonderful answers for for all the questions asked by us we'll now proceed towards uh, uh, the vote of thanks i deem it a great honor to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of civil department and assms college of engineering and also like to extend a very hearty gratitude to everyone involved in making this webinar uh, successful and to grace them for the uh, crucial work firstly i would like to thank our two guest uh, guest speakers uh, aniket uh, uh, aniket sir and rohit kaul sir who despite their busy scheduled uh, spare time for us we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence uh, and i am absolutely sure that everyone uh, attending this uh, seminar has benefited from listening to you and feel motivated and inspired by your words i would also like to thank all the members of assms uh, society for the support our principal dr ds bormane sir for his enthusiastic support and guidance our head of department dr uttam awari sir for allowing such sessions that broaden the perspective uh, of students and also uplift uh, them technical team for hosting uh, the session so smoothly all organizing members for their tireless effort and i ex- uh, and also like to extend my special gratitude uh, to you respected audience for your uh, patient listening as i said uh, i declare the session to be over thank you everyone for joining in and asking your uh, wonderful questions rohit thank you thank you rohit yes sir uh, thank you very much it was very nice session and very informative and as on the same you have done the project right yeah. uh, that time and now you are the consultant for biim 
Yes, sir. I am very proud of you, both of you, Aniket and Rohit. Uh, very nice session, and it will help uh, our students also to join such a, uh, say BIM, right? And uh, hope uh, you will be uh, helping our students as you are alumni of this college, isn't it? <laughs> sure, sir. And you are my favorite students. That time you know that. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Rohit and Aniket. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to thank everyone. You know, especially the ASSMS, you know, engineering faculties. You know, through their guidance, we were able to, you know, uh, clear our doubts, clear our vision for the company. Nagrale sir also assisted a lot in completion of final year project. You know, the idea, you know, uh, the incubation of that idea was there inside the ASSMS. They had given us the flexibility as well as the entire environment so that we can take that knowledge and do something much better through that particular knowledge. So thank you so much. And the entire they have given us such an idea of yeah, I was very impressed of uh, that project actually that time. Uh, and uh, I, I also uh, thought that uh, they should go for uh, such a say, consult consulting. Uh, that time I have told Aniket also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know that. Do, that Anikati, do you remember that? Yes, yes, you said you should continue in this. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that support. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, all the students, for your you know kind patience for the entire one hour to you know hear us out. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Also, one small announcement for the participants. Uh, feedback link has been shared in the chat box. Everyone, please provide us with your feedback. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Also, Vedant, we shall also be sharing one more feedback form from our end. Uh, okay, sir. Shishima. So, they'll be forwarding it to you. No? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for the thank opportunity. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Lockdown offline. sir, office college Yes, sir. 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 Thank you so much, ma'am, for supporting at all time and arranging this session for us. Arranging the session. <laughs>